Okay, here we go. So what it takes to be a leader in a reset world. I'm resetting the webinar right now. <laughs> Had to because I, I threw myself off on my own slide order. So um, yes, it's all about stepping into a new level within yourself and stepping into a new level of you within your organization, within your company, within your team, taking it beyond what you've never taken it beyond before. We all need leaders right now. We need leadership right now. And any time there's a major challenge, whether it's, I mean, this is the hugest, this is the whole planet. So whether it's, you know, a major challenge within a home unit or a major channel challenge within a team or your entire organization, whenever there's a challenge, there's going to be a, there's going to be a split in terms of how people respond and react. You know, it's the flight or fight within us. It's human nature. So to really be a leader in a reset world is to not, to not buy into that innate process within us to just, you know, flight or fight. And those are our only two choices. It's a very polarized uh, perspective because you're saying to yourself, you're putting yourself in a double bind. It's like, this is all I have. I can either do this or that. And that double bind keeps you from being creative. It keeps you from being able to take, a, take advantage of the, the time so that you can rethink and reimagine what it is that you want your company to look like, what it is you want your life to be like. So yes, so rising above that normal, rising above the stagnation of normal and not allowing yourself to get bought into or sucked into these buzzwords like a new normal, so a, a new normal of stagnation, to not let yourself go there. And it's really challenging when you see it everywhere because that's how patterns of thinking are created they're created through repetition so when we see the same message over and over and over we actually start to be that message and so no i don't think anyone that's on this webinar today wants to be a new level of stagnation or status quo i think everybody that's on here today is a leader and is all about moving forward and developing new ways of thinking and new ways of approaching the growth, the success, and, and the fulfillment of their lives and in business. So rise above that, take yourself up and beyond. You know, if you consider, if you consider a hot air balloon, it rises due to heat. You know, it's pressure, it's heat. If you look at a kite, like a kite flies the highest when it has the most wind resistance. And looking at whatever you have that you're dealing with in your organization, in your industry right now, using that resistance, using that pressure, using that heat to raise up and to take your success, your growth, your ingenuity, the, the reimagining, the, the, the visioning of your future to the next level is, is the key because that's what's going to set you apart and that's what's going to make the difference. So I'll talk a little bit later on in the slides about 3D, 4D, 5D perception. Um, but initially, I wanted to share with you that, you know, being willing to change and grow is really the key here. Because there's, there's so much um, good that can come from this in terms of 
how you view yourself and how much you're willing to think beyond your current circumstances or to perceive beyond your current reality. So we'll come to this and I'll share with you. Um, this is kind of the bonus at the end, if you will. We'll get into different kinds of perception and how changing your perception actually shifts your reality. So a little bit about me. So I grew up, uh, I grew up in a rural area and spent a great deal of time outdoors. I had so much freedom, you know, we just, as kids, you know, I think I was learned to drive at like 10 years old and uh, it was, um, it was a manual transmission. <clears throat> it was actually my grandfather's truck and um, my legs weren't long enough to, to, you know, do the gas and the clutch at the same time. So I just sit on the edge of the seat and just kind of like, you know, lean to one side to run the gas. And then when I went to shift, I had to like twist my body. Oh my gosh, you know, to, in today's world, we would look at that as being like child endangerment. But hey, you know, when you grow up on a farm and you have a lot of space around you, it's just, it's just the way it works. You know, you learn to drive at a young age. My job was to bring the snacks out to the field. So, <clears throat> pardon me, I would just be part of that whole process. And the big challenge was on, on a dirt road, meeting a vehicle and not freaking out. You know, you had to hold your cool because when you get to the edge of the road and there's gravel, it can, it can cause the vehicle to, you know, to sway and to swing back and forth. So, you know, you really cultivate like nerves of steel. You cultivate this level of um, resilience as a child, or maybe it's already there. Maybe that resilience is already there and it doesn't get programmed out of you because when you're in a rural environment, it's really about staying strong and level-headed and getting things done. So, you know, it's, um, it's something that I bring into all the work that I do because I have a different perspective on, on how, the, how the world works because farming is tough, man. It is tough. It's probably one of the hardest, and not just from a physical perspective, but the emotional stability that you have to have to weather the storm and the mental fortitude and creativity and you know it's just it's endless and I, I suppose people maybe don't really consider it to be about that but yeah the the business of farming that's a tough business right there so um some of my work has taken me around the world and uh 17 countries so far. So you want to get on over to my YouTube channel and subscribe and hit the bell button. I'm building up that subscribership right now. And I'd love to have your help with that. As soon as we hit a thousand subscribers, then we can, we have more latitude to play with the channel and do creative stuff. So if you'd head on over there, here's the tiny URL. It's NEI for change YT and uh, subscribe and then there's a little bell next to the subscription button so hit the bell because I, when i upload new material then you'll get a little notice so this is just an example of some of the industries that i've been involved in and we partner with um with post-secondary education systems in different parts of the world and i fly in and, and they build an audience through their local business owners and I fly in and I teach them these tools and how to scale their business and how to rethink things, especially emerging, um, emerging economies that emerging markets that are just really getting their traction. And so in fact, Christos and I are um, working on a global project right now 
that will take us into many emerging markets and starting with Greece later on this year. So I'm very excited about that. Any, any SME, we can help you. And we can also scale the program for large corporations. So it's really exciting to be able to be of service in this kind of way. Here's just a few organizations that, um, that I've had my partnerships with and, uh, you know, yachting, marine, um, business jets, uh, leadership programs in Spain at Compostela de Santiago, or Santiago de Compostela, had it backwards. What a beautiful little city. I can't even tell you. It's just absolutely extraordinary. So I think the point here is this comes from many years across wide variety of industries and countries, cultures, thinking systems, um, the way, you know, different ways of handling growth. Here's a few partners um, that we've worked with, you know, from the UKTI to OWIT, which is a women's international trade group in Lake Geneva, the FBI. I mean, you can check out my LinkedIn profile and you can get all this information. So I want to tell you a little bit about Christos and, um, and maybe Christos, you could give us a thumbnail as to what it is that you're going to be covering today. So Christos and I met last, uh, last autumn when I was in Manhattan and threw a little cocktail party at the Mondrian. And uh, we've, we've since become very good friends. We share, uh, I would say some, perspective on what it's going to take the world right now to be able to adjust. And so we've both jumped in with both feet and we're creating this platform, this global platform for business leaders around the world. So maybe you could tell us a little bit about what you're going to talk about today. Yes, of course. Hello, everyone. This is Christos Kritikos. Always a great pleasure to listen to Deborah. I mean, I can just sit here and just listen to Deborah speak. And the way she, and I always, I always feel so like I have so much, I can get so much better coming across on screen whenever I look at her. I'm like, oh, how does she do it? But anyway, and That's awesome. Thank you. Deborah and I share, uh, a, let's say, forward thinking uh, approach to leadership and entrepreneurship and businesses, and that's for sure. And uh, I, I'm, I'm very happy when she said that this is going to be, this is, you know, this is some content she's going to present that she was, you know, she wasn't sure about putting it out there because it may shake things up a little bit. This is very exciting because we are here to shake things up, right? So uh, my background is, uh, in startups, uh, usually super early stage as a coach and a mentor. And uh, I do focus on entrepreneurship and leadership. And I do share, Deb I do share Deborah's um, revolutionary approach to leadership. So I will say a few more about this a little bit later. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's, you know, it's really a blessing to to know you and, and be able to collaborate with you and you know that's really what it's all about that's you know why would you work with someone you don't like it just doesn't make any sense to me so um so thank you and next up so today we have a brand new guest and his name is jason so uh jason heads up our marketing agency god you look like a model you know i see <laughs> <laughs> and um, the guy is just a wizard. He's just brilliant. I'm so excited to have you be a part of what we're doing in helping businesses be able to market and, and just really build up their brand and, and gain business development. So we're rolling out a new program for 
for, well, I'll let you talk about it. So Jason, go ahead. And, and just before you go, I mean, weren't you in the Navy? Air Force. Air Force. That's Air Force. right. That's right. <laughs> My dad was in the Air Force. That is super cool. That's powerful. That's powerful. Thank you to your dad for your service, for his service. Thank you for everybody that's on this Zoom call. Hey, we're super, super happy to have you here. I got to give it back to Deborah. Hey, if there's anyone that has a heart of gold, if there's anyone that really cares more about not just her clients, but, but people in general and business owners in general who want to take things to the next level this year, hey, I've never met anybody as generous and as, as strong-witted as, as Deborah. So I got to give it back Thank to her. I got to give all the thanks back to her. It's um, going to make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, you know, for, for, for everybody that's on here, what we're going to be sharing with you guys here is something super, super powerful. Something that we found that that's really been able to not just a, expand our businesses, but help other people. Something that nobody else is talking about right now, especially during the lockdown, especially during times of uncertainty. So, Hey, you guys are going to be in for a really, really, really big surprise. We're going to let you in real, really soon. So, hey, I just got to give it back to Deborah. I'm not going to say anything more. <laughs> <laughs> now you're teasing just everybody, yet. Jason. Yet. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Thank you. So cool. Okay, let's dive in to, to what I want to share with you today about leadership. And, um, and then Christos and, and Jason will do their... Uh, wisdom, impart their wisdom on you, and then we'll save to the to the end the the little bonus. Um, all right, so here's what I'm covering today. So embracing change, and uh, this is a biggie because you know it kind of goes against the grain of our programming. I'm going to go into cultivating consistency in focus and routine. This is really important. And I'll share with you why it's so important. And then of course, rising above normal. I've always been this believer that, um, it, you know, it's just not acceptable to, to just accept whatever comes my way. It's just on a personal level, I just, uh, you know, there's a fine line between acceptance, you know, you accept the things you cannot change and you change the things you can. There's a fine line for me. So I wanna share with you some thoughts on that today. And then getting into establishing targets for growth. The mind runs off of direction. So we'll get into that process as well. So first of all, First and foremost, cultivating personal power as a leader. This is the key right here. And because I think, you know, we're in such a, um, we're in such a unprecedented time, like uncharted territory that it's so easy to feel like you're powerless and the way you know you're feeling like you're powerless is when negative emotions start rolling to the surface. And I've, I've been going through this, you know, in the beginning stages of this, I was so angry. I can't even explain to you how angry I was. And I'm like, cause you know, I was sharing with you earlier about how as a kid on the farm, I was driving a pickup truck at 10 years old, several miles to the field. And I was riding my horse, you know, for miles. Like one time, I think I was like 11. I was nine or 11, I can't remember. But I had gone, we had, we had trucked and trailered my horse to an event in the nearest town for, and I was, you know, I. I barrel raced and was involved in 4-H and all that stuff. And, and I was helping some of the 4-H leaders do some, you know, herding some cattle. So my horse was there. Well, then my family couldn't come pick me up because something was going on at the farm. 
and they just couldn't leave. It was like an urgent thing that had to be addressed. So my mom called one of the leaders and said, you know, she's going to have to ride her horse home. So I rode my horse home by myself 14 miles. And so that kind of freedom when we're going through what we've been experiencing was the first thing that I felt anger around was like there was this loss of freedom. So the only place that one can go to cultivate personal power as a leader is, is inside. That's where it all starts and stops. And you're not ever going to find it outside of you. And here's why, because most people are looking at somebody else for the answer. Most people are looking outside of themselves to be saved, to be protected, to be taken care of. And so most people can barely, and I don't mean to sound this in a judgmental way, it's just human nature. It doesn't make you wrong. It just is a programming that we're looking outside of ourselves for answers, for protection, for guidance. And what I'm proposing here is that you cultivate it within yourself so that you don't have to, you don't have to feel like you're out of control basically, or life is out of control. So the cool thing about leadership is that Leaders don't force people to follow. They invite them on a journey. And this is so amazing when you look at it from this perspective. It's, you know, it's, it's like, come with me, you know, come with me. I am creating this and I would love to have you be a part of that. Come with me. And then let's see what we can create together collectively. So what is, what is leadership? Well, leadership is the ability to acquire and apply knowledge and skills. Okay, we get that. It's a collection of information. It's a, it's a capacity for logic. But what else is leadership? Leadership, the way I see leadership, is leadership can be a very, um, it's, it can be a, it can be solitude. It's, it's a very personal journey. I don't really think that we can say that leadership has to look a certain way. Certainly what leadership is not is just accepting whatever comes your way, never questioning, never expanding outside of the lines. You know, that's not leadership. And I believe that each one of us have within us a capacity for leadership. Now, what leadership is not is it's not a title. You might have the title of leader, but I can share with you that over the years I've done a great deal of work with the C-suite in corporations. And one would automatically assume that anytime they have a C in their title, CEO, CFO, COO, you know, we're assuming that they know everything they are supposed to know about what they're doing in their role, in their company. And Usually that's not the truth. <laughs> that's not the case at all. In fact, most of the time they're figuring that out as they go. And so leadership is not a title. Leadership is not a status and leadership is not a salary. Leadership is how you run yourself, how you relate to change how you not just embrace change, but actually get out ahead of it and create change. That's leadership. That's true leadership. So 
there needs to be, I suppose, a, you know, we were talking about resilience earlier. There needs to be a capacity for bouncing back because most, most of it is failing. It's, we look at, I think we look at leadership as being all about success, but honestly, I think leadership is more about failing and then adjusting and calibrating off of that failure than it is about it always looking good. You know, sometimes it looks really dirty and I don't mean like corrupt dirty. I mean, dirty as in you get in the trenches and you, it doesn't always look pretty. Sometimes leadership is really going against your natural human desire to play it safe. And that's a muscle that needs to be built. So not everybody can do that because it's scary. It's what if, you know, the what if, like, what if this doesn't work? What if we lose it all? What, what if, what if, what if? So that leadership is really something that has to be cultivated between you and you. And it's not just, you know, one cultivation. It's a consistent cultivating. It's a verb. So I thought this makes for a brilliant metaphor. You know, and these were, this isn't the picture of the geese I wanted. I wanted to have, you know, Canada geese up here because the Canada geese have a very sort of unique um, approach to leadership. So the way it works when they fly, this is all about wind resistance. So the lead goose or the lead duck will basically be the one that, you know, it's like a, it's like a ship or a yacht cutting through the water. You know, the, the bow is like, it's shaped the way it is for a reason because it cuts through the water. So when a flock of geese are flying, the lead goose is taking the brunt of the force of the wind. And so you can only do that for so long and then you get fatigued. So there's a rotation of the flock where the lead, the lead goose will, will lead the flock until they start to get tired and then they'll switch out and a new goose will roll to the front and they'll take the brunt of the wind. And that's why the V-shape, because, you know, like in a, in a jet, I'm sure Jason could school me on this, like in a jet, you know, you've got that shape of the nose of the jet and then the wingspan. So in really high level, high functioning, highly creative leadership, which I think, I think all leadership should be creative, I think any time you have leadership that is restricting movement, any time you have leadership that is um, taking away the ability to think, the ability to, to mastermind, any time you take away the, the ability to be creative and come up with solutions and ideas and resourcefulness from the people you're leading, you're really not a leader. You know, that, that's a tyrant. <laughs> a leader taps their people. So everyone really is a leader. It's just to what capacity are you willing to lead? And the first step in leadership is leading yourself in such a way that you lead yourself to greater self-expression, for example. You lead yourself to greater communication. You lead yourself to create a, uh, greater uh, resourcefulness where you, instead of looking at things to be absolute, you look at the possibilities 
And how does that work? It has to happen through the way you talk to yourself and it happens through the way you relate to yourself. And then it, the next level of that is it happens through your worldview slash model of the world. So you'll only lead to the capacity of which your model of the world or your worldview enables you or allows you to lead. And therein lies, you know, if you go back a few webinars, I talked about the different thinking systems. And right now we're going through a human thinking systems change process. So everyone is a leader and it's about accountability. It's about creativity. It's about being a contributor. And most importantly, it's about your word. Your word is law and the word that you have with yourself is the law by which you govern your life. Now the ego will tell you, for example, let's say you say to yourself, okay, I am not eating chocolate anymore. I'm taking a six month break from chocolate because I have quite the chocolate addiction. So if you're gonna say that to yourself, then stop eating chocolate. You have to be at choice point, right? If you're not at choice point and you say to yourself, I'm going to stop eating chocolate and you don't, and you continue to eat it, then you undermine your power. You undermine your personal power. You undermine the relationship that you have with yourself because your word is law. And so when you say something to yourself, but you really know it's not true, then you actually cut yourself off from your power. Now that's not the same as when you say to yourself, um, I'm successful and you're not quite there yet and you're building yourself up. That's a different conversation. So I don't want you to confuse it with that. What I'm saying is that if you say to yourself, I am, and see, this is why New Year's resolutions never work because people will say all sorts of things to themselves, but then never do them or maybe do them for a few days or a few weeks. And then they're too hard. They're too hard. So they won't keep doing them because the ego doesn't like anything that's outside of the box. The ego likes to maintain control. So it will convince you that this new thing that you say you're, you're going to do and don't do is too hard to do it. So the ego likes to, to maintain this like status quo kind of concept and at the cost, at what cost, you know, at the cost of being miserable, at the cost of being unhealthy, at the cost of being uh, in poverty with scarcity, the, the, the ego will do anything it can to convince you that even though you said you wanted to do something that it's okay not to do it. So this is, you know, I think there's books on this and I'm kind of old school about it because when I first learned this, I learned it from some old school people, some old school trainers. Like uh, the very first person I learned this concept from was an author by the name of Florence Scovel Shin. So if you have not read the book, The Game of Life and How to Play It by Florence Scovel Shin, I highly recommend it. And her other book, she has several, but her other book that really makes an impact for me is Your Word is Your Wand. Our word is our wand. We speak our reality into existence. And when business leaders get this, and you're around the boardroom table and you're realizing what it is that you're really saying, and then you adjust it so that it, it's designed for success, not designed out of fear, not designed out of limitation, not designed out of, well, what if it doesn't work? You know, you could live your whole life by it, that way. And, and at the end of the day, like I, I live a life of no regrets. So my thing is, is that when I check out off this planet, 
that I'm able to look back on my life and go, I did all the things that I said I wanted to do. And I'd rather have that experience at the risk of doing it than to say I played it safe and I didn't do the things, I didn't actualize parts of me because I was, I was being cautious. But that's me. You have to decide what it is for you. Cultivating consistency and focus and routine. So if you go to my YouTube channel, I did a whole video on how, what kind of routines I run with myself. Now there's a fine line between having a routine and being too routine, being too rigid, being too structured. And so there's a fine line. So, you know, it's like there's a certain brush stroke, there's a certain umbrella of what needs to be done in a, a year, a quarter, a week, a month, a day. And then there has to be room for that allowance of it just to come to you. Because, you know, I think Deepak Chopra summed it up for me in the most eloquent way many, many years ago when I first was um, one of his groupies, I guess. I used to go to all the seminars and sit in the front row. Um, and before that, I listened to all of his audio programs. And so he summed it up by saying this, it's the gap between the thoughts where the magic happens. It's not in the white knuckling of pushing, forcing, you know, it's just like leadership. Earlier slide, like leadership is not forcing people to follow you. That's tyranny. Leadership is inviting people on an adventure of creation. And I, I'm telling you, if you look at your business from this other perspective, that your business is an adventure, you have skills, you have, a, you have gifts, you have talents, you have desire, you have ideas, you have, you have dreams, you have goals, you have, you have contribution to make to the marketplace, to humanity, to the people that work for you, that work with you, to your clients. And when you look at your business from this perspective of what it is that you are creating, and then you invite people that are for, you know, vibing with you at that level and can appreciate what you're creating and also want to contribute to what you're creating. Now you've got, you know, the perfect setup, if you will, between stakeholders and clients and partners and resources, like it just all comes together. And in order to do that, Personally, I recommend that every day you meditate for 15 minutes. Some days you're going to be able to just like surrender and you won't feel your toes and you won't feel your nose. You know, you'll just chill and you'll just be in this amazing suspended place of bliss for maybe three minutes, maybe one minute. You know, it's the way I look at meditation is out of a 15 minute meditation, it probably takes me 13 and a half minutes to let go. And then I have like a minute or a minute and a half where I'm just like, wow, you know, this is really peaceful. And that's, that's all it takes. You know, it doesn't take sitting on a mountaintop in a toga. It's just, you just need to sit down on a regular basis. I use the same chair at the same time every day. And that's enough routine right there. And then you can take that, now you've experienced that suspended place of alignment where you've connected with you instead of connecting with the world first and then letting the world pull you around by all the negative news and struggle and challenges and all the stuff on your calendar you gotta do. Start here, start with that meditation. And when your beliefs and your desire are aligned, poof, it comes to you. 
And see, this is what nobody tells business leaders is that it's a, you know, if you just get into alignment before you start jumping into your day and pushing and struggling and striving and forcing and, you know, things would happen a lot easier for you and probably a lot quicker too, honestly. And then of course, targets for growth. So what I have companies do is take a year, at a year at, a, at a, uh, a a year time frame at a time, and especially right now, I mean, you, I've said this for years. You know, you can't write a five year plan or a ten year plan. Like, did you really think in December when you were rolling into the holidays and having a glass of cheer that? come the Q1 of 2020 that this would be happening. There's no way you can write a five-year plan, even a three-year plan. I mean, you can have targets, but keep it nimble, keep it fluid and calibrate consistently because, you know, like a river meanders or rages in sometimes what doesn't even look to make any sense it has momentum and leadership leadership is all about momentum now the thing is is that what can happen is as a leader you you know you attract your people and everybody's contributing and it's looking good and you have spent time alone, you've been doing your visioning, you've allowed your imagination to get into the feeling of what it is that you're creating. It's like something that you live every day and, and you've gone from hoping it'll happen to believing it'll happen to absolutely knowing it'll happen. And then you show up and your people aren't in alignment. So that's where you have to recalibrate, you see, because if you meet them where they are, then you're not in alignment. So as a leader, you have to be able to move in and out of your operations and what it is that you're creating and the people that you're collaborating with so that you don't get pulled into um, perceptions that aren't accurate or conducive to the growth of your organization. So these targets are important, really important, but they're not to be restrictive. All right. So calibration's the key. You know, I'd rather see you make a bad decision and then have to recalibrate and make a new decision then see you not make any decision and to allow external circumstances to control and dominate whether you thrive or not. It would be much smarter for you to go the other direction and make a decision and then get into it and go, hmm, okay, that wasn't the right decision, but what can we take from that? Let's recalibrate and we'll make that shift and then watch what comes out of that. So I'm just looking to see if there's anything else that uh, I wanted to share with you. And that is, um, yes, a little bit about top-down leadership. So when we're looking at top-down leadership, you know, I, I spoke of this a little bit earlier, um, you know, that leadership is not a title. Leadership is not a salary. Leadership is not the corner office necessarily. Leadership is in here. And so there's a couple different models. You know, there's the Newtonian physics model of top-down leadership, hierarchies, and you know, you're not able to contribute because you're just supposed to go do this one little piece of the of the global job and then keep your opinions to yourself. That's that's old. That doesn't, we're not there anymore. We're in quantum physics and in quantum physics, everyone is a contributor. So 
whatever level you're at in within the company, you need to be contributing because especially when you're interfacing directly with the clients, you, you have more knowledge of what's happening with the customer segments than maybe higher, higher archies, higher levels in the hierarchy would have. And so contributing that it's, it's not just important. It's, it's a must. You must do that. You must. And then calibrate, 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 calibrate. I can't say this enough. See, as human beings, we like to kind of get things to a certain place and then think we've, we're done. You know, it's like get it locked down and then, okay, now we can relax because we don't have to do anymore. And, and I think this is a notion that has come from um, the way our school system is set up. You know, you go through grade school and then college and then uni and you're done. And it's like, uh, no, you're not done. You're just beginning. Because then there's the school of life. Then there's the school of consciousness. Then there's the school of personal growth and empowerment and quiet in the ego and really getting into that quantum physics aspect of who you are being. So, but we're not taught that. So this is the thing that has to be looked at right now is that expect to calibrate and expect, expect to keep calibrating. When we change our expectations, then it just gets so much easier. You know, it's um, it, it just, there's, there's so many systems that are breaking down and have been breaking down for quite some time. It's not just how we do business. It's even looking at, you know, marriage and, and family units and I mean everything and I'm not saying it's good or bad I don't have any judgment on it and maybe that's another thing we need to really consider is the rightness and wrongness this polarity of it can only be right and it can only be wrong I ask my business every day you know what is it that you would like what direction are you going that is the most fulfilling direction for this company. And it keeps showing me, is it directions that maybe my ego would have not thought of? Absolutely, it's many times it's directions that my ego resists. And what's interesting in that is that when I start to attune to it, and I have my clients do this all the time because they, you know, working with a construction company right now that is multi-generations and you know the way the dad had it set up is this is the way it has to be this is our revenue stream and it's worked like this for 25 years and you know where that story is going right and then we have younger generations coming in and learning to be in a lead position and i see that because what they really are learning to do is to have their own voice in the presence of the patriarch is it really at the end of the day it's not the company it's it's who they're being with themselves right and it always comes back to that so i could uh i could i could go on and train on this for like hours and i have to check my phone and see what time it is all right so but i don't want to do that to you guys because i have a super whopper of a bonus and uh, I want to get Christos and Jason up here and um, let you guys have a go. So Christos, I think you have access to, I'm going to stop the share so you can jump in there. Yes. Let me share my screen. Okay. Oops. Mm, not yet. All right. Let me do that. I thought I did, but apparently not. Okay. Here we go. There we go. You're up. All right. Um, so
So I will, I will definitely double down to what uh, Deborah said. Not surprisingly, double down. <laughs> and I will touch a little bit on leadership. I want to say a few things just to reiterate what is not a leader. Deborah did a great job in mentioning that, but I think it, it helps to reiterate that I have a couple of examples here. A leader is not a manager. A manager is someone who coordinates, plans, measures, monitors, but is not necessarily a leader. Most of us may have experience of working with someone or seeing someone in a managerial position that wouldn't qualify as a leader. So this is a, an easy distinction. A leader is not necessarily someone with followers. And I'm not just talking about the modern uh, social media followers. Uh, these people are definitely not always leaders, but also uh, the s soldiers will follow their captain, but that doesn't make the captain necessarily a leader. Uh, in a similar way, this is kind of a weird example for some people. A leader is not just someone who turns a vision into reality because an artist does this when they envision a painting and then they, they put it on canvas. And of course, as we also all know, a leader is not necessarily someone in a position of power. So the boss, the president, etc., they have power, but they're not necessarily a leader. So I think around us, we see these examples of people that they do have the titles and they have the, the followers and they, they have the power and they're not leaders. And if this is the case, that means that leadership is essentially disassociated from those elements. So what is a leader? It's basically someone is basically, like I said, doubling down on what Deborah said. Someone who takes responsibility for decisions and the necessary action on those decisions. And here, what comes up for me as the way of uh, approaching this is taking a stand. A leader mm -hmm. takes a stand about something and uh, then lives nice. their life based on that. Uh, and then they influence and empower people to participate. This is not about me being the boss. This is me, uh, not be about being the president, having the, hierarch the hierarchical position. It's about enrolling essentially people, inspiring people to be part of this. And then not only they do that, but they direct this effort towards the attainment of a goal. Because uh, th this last part, uh, it's, it's lost, especially with a lot of the modern influencers, which they do have, they do take a stand for something and they do have the, the, the audience and they do have influence on people, but they don't really do anything with it. So really a leader is about starting from the inside and uh, being some, someone for myself, let's say, being first of all someone for myself and then just getting other people enrolled in that vision and, and using that for, to, for the attainment of a goal, hopefully a, 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 a virtuous uh, goal. So leadership is an inner quality, is a behavior, is an attitude, is irrelevant to external people or circumstances, and is agnostic to personality, attributes, title, and all these things. So it's a strict, like leadership is a strictly like, personal think, basically. So it's about being, essentially, in all places, at all times, whether people are watching or not, you cannot be a leader part-time. You cannot just mm -hmm. be like, oh, I'll be a leader when, you know, like, when the boss is around. Or I, I used to say that to my brother when they were kids and he, he used to laugh. Uh, I would tell him the, the, the idea is to behave always as like to behave in a way that if mom was watching from somewhere, she would like be proud of us. So I suppose I was, I was a leader even when I was a young boy and I didn't even know it, but it's about being, it's simple as that. And that's why a lot of the things that Deborah mentioned, and at the end of the day, a lot of the practices around leadership are the practice of being. And being is, a, is an interesting uh, uh, beast to tame. 
there is a sequence and the beauty of the sequence and the interesting thing is about the sequence is that it gets practiced from top to bottom the way I share it on the screen, but the awareness moves from bottom to top. I have a goal. I set a goal for myself. It could be it's something very simple. I want to, you know, come at this webinar today and provide some nice information, come across nicely, useful, impactful, you know. And then on my way, let's say to the studio, of course, I mean, this is an imaginary example. We are all at home, but then I, 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 someone cuts me off in the car. I get upset. I'm, I'm fuming or maybe my, my kids are, are, are the, the kid is sick today. and I'm worried about it or something happens with my partner. So now I show up and everything goes, you know, down the drain. So why is this? So we set a goal usually. And in the quest of that goal, ourselves get in the way. Ourselves meaning our ego, our preconceived notions, our stereotypes, all these things we carry with us. And then we realize that the only way to reach that goal is to actually deal with us first. And so that means thinking a certain way, uh, approaching things a certain way, behaving a certain way, but it's not that simple. It takes practice. So then we take it a step further up and we need to build that foundation. Is that the meditation that Deborah mentioned is having the mental and spiritual and physical health and strength and having a daily routine to um, uh, support this. So this is how usually awareness, awareness moves from bottom to top. And then eventually we realize that this is the way to do it. So then we make this conscious choice of being a leader for ourselves and living our life top to bottom the way it's listed there. So we start with the foundation, we start with the meditation, we start with the health, with the nutrition, tending to the body, tending to the mind, tending to the spirit, having that routine that, that, that supports all these things. So then we're stronger out there. So then when uh, we, we get to life, we, we approach, we have this mindset of uh, really starting from a solid ground or a solid foundation, having this, this really or from a place of inner power, inner strength, being source about things, being confident about what we are and what we want, joy of missing out. We don't care about what we're missing out because we know that we're doing the right thing for us. Of course, ego is always an enemy. Fear is always a you know, an obstacle that we think there is there. And once we, we have this, this, this foundation, then we can take the committed action, which is get out there and making it happen. And if we are lucky, if we're fortunate, and we are leaders of ourselves, life will present an opportunity. You know what? Forget the fortunate. Fortunately, if we're leaders of ourselves, life will present us with opportunities to become leaders in the eyes of others because we don't others see us and accept us as leaders we're not we don't become just because we want to be in the eyes of others in society the the analogy i make and that will be my last thing for today um, is is like being an artist uh, i'm an artist because i go into my studio and i paint maybe i'm not a famous or recognized artist, but I am an artist. And I will never become a recognized artist if I don't have paintings. So first I paint and I'm an artist, or actually first I am an artist and then I paint and then I get recognized as an artist. And it's the same with leadership. I am a leader inside and I act as a leader and then I get recognized as a leader. So that's all from me for today. Oh, that's fantastic. So um, I love how you laid this down. And it was if, if I had a note here to um, and then I didn't cover it. And that is, you know, leading with the clarity of your vibrational momentum. And that's essentially what you're saying. So vibration, we're all energy all of us, everything's energy. The trees are energy, this, the birds are energy, your energy, I'm energy, these computers are energy, everything's energy. 
different levels, different, different vibrational levels, but everything's energy. So the um, leading with the clarity of your vibrational momentum is it's the, it's the difference that makes the difference. So if you're not in alignment and you're not leading from, a, from an awareness of your vibrational um, momentum, then you have to do other things to compensate for that. So then you have to tell people what to do. You have to boss people around. You have to create all of these rules and structures and systems that, imp that are imposed upon people to keep them in alignment because you're as a leader, not you, Christos or Jason, or you guys watching, but you as in people, because if there's a lack of true alignment as a leader, then you have to impose rules and regulations to control others because you're not truly leading. So this is really good. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, because it's uh, people pay attention to who we are and they respond to who we are and then maybe what we do. And that will sound a little bit geeky, uh, but it's a little practical, uh, I don't know, advice. I don't know, just practical information for anybody. But my to-do list, which is this crazy, I'm such a doer. So my, my 25 item to-do list for the day, it's bullet point has a being in parentheses. Mm. So my exercise next to it says, I am uh, committed, strong, and healthy. And then when I have, uh, I'm working on some project, I will say I'm brilliant and inspired and productive. I, actually, my to-do list says these things. It's I, I would share, but I would feel a little bit embarrassed. <laughs> so I will just, <laughs> I will just say it. And it's an interesting exercise and it makes a difference. And actually, Deborah, you said that earlier, it's about aligning before doing, aligning, aligning with that energy, being that, and then doing. And this comes so much more powerful and so much more, more, more effective. And it can move mountains and people, which sometimes it's harder to move than mountains. So, Right, right. <laughs> no, it's so true. And... You know, um, it comes from how, you know, start with what you can. So for example, let's say, let's say you work in a company and um, you only have so much power, let's say authority, but you would like to have more. So what can you start with in order to get more authority or to be recognized more. Well, you can start with you. And so I did this, um, I did this uh, little clip recently from my YouTube channel on starting with what you have to work with and that's you, your, and in your body, let's say it's your physical health. So if you're unhealthy, if you're overweight, if you're um, dealing with some sort of disease, then you're perceiving all of life through those filters. I, I used to have a weight problem and it was like, my weight was like a yo-yo pretty much all of my life. You know, I had three sets of clothes. I had the fat clothes, the skinny clothes and the transition clothes. <laughs> and so um, it took me, and I used to own a gym, you know, so I was no stranger to fitness or nutrition, but it took a real inward journey to figure out where I was out of alignment and I was throwing off my body chemistry. And so until I got to that place where I figured it out, I perceived life through wherever, wherever my body was at at the time. 
So if I was overweight, if I was had this the extra 20 pounds on me or whatever, or 30 pounds on me, I perceived life through that lack of mobility. If I wasn't feeling well, maybe I had um, inflammation in my body. And, you know, when we get inflammation, we get brain fog and can't remember things. I perceived life, I perceived business success, I perceived relationships through that physical experience I was having. You cannot separate the two. Like you're living, your body is your vehicle that gets you around town. So when you're able to master and you make the decision to, to master your relationship with your body, it serves as a, it serves as um, like a tool because you can say, okay, I, I've taken my power back. I've, I've mastered how I relate to my body. My body is now efficient. It's healthy. It's in homeostasis. I can do that with my, my money. I can do that with my relationships. I can do that with my career growth, with my business, um, scaling my business. And so start wherever you feel like you can gain control first. I hate to use the word control, but yeah, you understand what I'm talking about, right? Where you feel that you can step into personal power. So if you're, if you're out of shape, get into shape. If you eat a lot of sugar, cut out the sugar. If you drink a lot of booze, lay off the booze. I mean, you know, it's, it's the little things that cause the turn that create the pivot. So speaking of being fit, I know every time I'm, I'm texting Jason, he's on his way for a workout. So he and I are always like crossing paths. It's like, I'm working out. I'll call you back. So Jason, what do you have to share with us on, on how they can use LinkedIn as a business development tool? I think everybody asks me this question all the time. It's like, I'm paying for LinkedIn and I'm not getting anywhere. So see, that's the thing. That's the thing. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, a hundred percent really quick. I just want to give it back over to Chris. That was an amazing presentation. I really learned a lot from that. Uh, leadership's truly one of the biggest things that, that, uh, everybody that's on this call, um, everybody that's on, that's on this call has, has, a has something, um, something that goes through their mind where, where they have a challenge every single day that, that really needs to be solved through their own leadership. A lot of times as a leader, you feel like there's so much on your back and there's, there's so many people depending on you and you wish you had somebody there. Um, but at the end of the day, the only person that could hold you accountable to is yourself. So I want to just give it back to Chris for that because I was taking notes the whole time he was speaking, you know? Um, it's awesome. So, so really, really Thank quick. I mean, yes, 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 yes. LinkedIn, LinkedIn right now is, is it's one of the, the most essential business tools and a lot of people use it. A lot of people don't know how to use it. See me personally, I was somebody who did not know how to use LinkedIn. See, I, I grew up in the age of Instagram. I grew up in the age of YouTube and that was, that was, a, oh wait, hold on. I'm having problems right here. Okay. If you guys can hear me, I just turned the gain up. If you guys can hear me, uh, just type a one, one, one on the chat. Gotcha. I want to see the ones over here. If you guys can hear me. Yeah. So somebody did say, raise your sound. I think you did it, right? Yeah. Yeah. I turned the gain up. Cool. Okay, can you guys hear me okay? You bet. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so, you know, I, I grew up in the age of Instagram and YouTube back when YouTube was just starting. That was like one of the biggest things in my era, but LinkedIn was looked on as just a job board. So I never really paid much attention to it because, hey, just like a lot of people on this call might feel, I was like, you know what? If there's anyone that I want to do business in, uh, business with, they're probably not on LinkedIn. See, the people I want to do business with, I want to surround myself with people that are so successful that they don't have the time to be on LinkedIn, that they have to have people reaching out to them. That's how I'm going to break my uh, break past six figures into the seven figure, figure, seven figure realm. But then I realized one thing, um, and it really hit me. It, it punched me in the face. Uh, like Mike Tyson said, everybody has a, has a plan until someone gets punched in the face, right? Yeah. So... So what, what really hit me 
was um, when one day I was watching uh, one of Dan Pena's videos, you know, the author of How to Make Your First 100 Million. And he said right there, when it comes to business acquisitions and mergers, the number one tool that we use is LinkedIn to find our deals, to get past the gatekeeper and speak to a decision maker. And when I read that, I, 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 you know, I was, I was, I was like this, this was me. I was, you know, I had one of those, oh, moments, right? <laughs> and so, so I, I, I went back at it and I said, wait a minute, hold on, hold on, LinkedIn. I, I didn't have a LinkedIn at the time, but I opened it up and I was looking around and I was like, okay, well, you know what? Yeah. I, I, Bill Gates is on LinkedIn. I don't know how much he checks that, but I mean, Hey, if, if he's on here, a lot of people might be on here that might just be worth my time. And, um, you know, as soon as I got on LinkedIn, Hey, I, I immediately got immersed <laughs> by a whole bunch of network marketers trying to pull me in their business. And Hey, I love network marketing. I, I, I love it. I'm in an opportunity today. I love the culture and everything that it's about. So if you're in network marketing, Hey, m much, much love to you. Big shout all the way from, um, from I am mastery Academy, but what, what, what happened was what, what this gentleman did, he invited me over to a Panera Bread. He sits me down and looks really, really close at me. He goes, hey, Jason, if you want more business than you can handle, you just got to learn how to use LinkedIn. And I was like, so what, what do I do? Do I, do, I just, do I just post and like post memes and, and funny things? Do, what, what do I do? <laughs> And then he just, he, he goes, look, you just got to go out. You got to, you got to do something. And, and this one word, if you guys, if you guys want to write this down, cause I'm definitely going to write this down. Look, if there's one word that I had to call a movie named after my life, and I think all you guys could agree with me, it's outreach. At the end of the day, a seven, a eight figure earner Grant Cardone said, he once said in one video, he said, the speed at which a business grows is on the ability that it has to market itself. It's not on the product. It's not on the staff. It's not on, on who you are. It's the ability that you have to take yourself, market yourself quicker to make enough sales fast enough to where you're profitable enough to grow and expand as, as quick as you need to be because the vast majority of businesses that fail is because they had the product, they didn't know how to sell it. Mm -hmm. So, so when when I realized that, I thought, you know what, that's true. And if you're in the B two B space, network marketing, if, if you're if you're in the the if you're in any type of 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 space where you needed to network, where you needed to rub shoulders with somebody, in order to catch a deal, or hey, if if you're even somebody that that does some kind of of B2C business where you speak to only affluent individuals, people that sell annuities and life insurance. If you're on this call right now, then this call is the call you needed to be on. The most important thing you're gonna hear all year. Because the thing is, when I realized that outreach was the single most important thing that could take me from where I was to the next level, me and Deborah got together and we said, okay, look, how can we make this happen quicker? How, how, because look, there's only one of you and you only have so much times a day. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen right now to share this concept with you guys. Let um, me make if, sure you have screen sharing capacity here. Um, hold on. I think you might have to give him that to him, Christos, because you're host right now. Can you make... Um, Make Jason host. There you go. You're in, Jason. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, okay. So look, so here's one thing from the Neuro Engineering Institute I'm going to share with you guys right now. A little secret that you guys can't tell anybody else about um, unless you have really good results with it yourself, right? So pretty much... What happened is me, me and Deborah came together and we said, okay, look, how, how can we help ourselves help more people? At the end of the day, the reason why we got in business, hey, look, yes, we were entrepreneurs. We wanted to make money, but how are we going to make money? Bob Proctor says you have to find a goal, find out how much you want to make, 
find the vehicle that you're gonna that that you're gonna do to help as many people as you can to get you to that goal. That's the law of attraction. That's the law of of of, of uh, attracting money into your life. So if you if you are a business owner, you know this concept really really well, and you you understand that. Look, referrals are the best form of business. When you meet somebody in person, that's the best way that you can do things. But at the end of the day, everybody realizes how valuable a sales force is. But see, a big problem with the sales force is the turnover rate. Sales is the number one industry, even, even when there's a recession. Everybody needs hardworking salesmen. But at the end of the day, um, sales is the number one turnover rate. A lot of salespeople drop. A lot of salespeople don't know what they're doing. Um, I'm not going to say that they don't know what they're doing, but but they, they don't know how to reach to that next level to help the business owner in a way where where they can expand themselves because the commission is is unlimited when it comes to being a good salesperson. But at the end of the day, a lot of times they 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 don't they don't have. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say the backbone or anything like that. They they don't have the the a strong will to take as many no's as they need to take to get them to this level. You know, the, the, the smashing away at the phone can only last so long um, without the personal development that they need and without the time that you need to nurture a salesperson to grow, to become that seven figure earner that's gonna take your business past eight and nine figures, right? So look, right now that we're on lockdown, right now that nobody can network, things were staying very stagnant. I mean, look, if you guys, if you guys had any type of, any type of doubt in your business saying that, look, this lockdown might just wipe me out. I cannot service people because I cannot meet them because I, I don't know where to get the, the, the next customer from because my customers that I had right now were in a certain industry and that certain industry is closed or it's, or it's capped out right now. And I don't know what to do. If I could pivot to the next industry, I would love to do it, but I don't know how I'm going to market myself to them. I don't have the time to invent a sales funnel, invent a new website, get some cool graphics going on. I don't have the time or money to do that because, hey, we need to get things quick. When this lockdown happened, what we realized was that, yes, we need to go back to going old school, but we need to put some new school into it. We need to figure out how we can speed this up a little bit. So look, at the end of the day, yes, we can agree. Networking is the biggest thing. When it comes to LinkedIn, hey, as long as you have a profile that says what you do, hey, you can talk the rest of it out because LinkedIn isn't really a place where you go to, to um, receive inbounds when you're, not, when, when you're just beginning. Until you're Deborah's level, <laughs> where you know she's 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 somebody that's been in the game for a while, and she's somebody who who branded herself, brands herself consistently after so long. I mean, hey, then yes, you're going to be getting people throwing basketballs in your hoops. But until then, you gotta do the outreach, and even then, Deborah's still out there doing that. Keep outreach. doing it. Yeah, you have to do it. Because you got to look for new and excited customers to join your business every single day. So look, and that's the thing. I mean, look, there's only 24 hours in a day. Um, the majority of people looking for their deal spend 30% of their time prospecting, 60% of their time servicing accounts, and only 10% of their time closing. Guys, if you're on this call, can we agree that the way to get off the six-figure hamster wheel is to have 70% of your time in revenue generating activity. There's no money servicing account, guys. It's at the, it's, you want to be at the register, ringing the register every single day, every moment you can. Yeah. So, so how can we do that using LinkedIn? Well, guys, look, at the end of the day, um, we did find something. We called it the LinkedIn Business Development Program. What this is, it's a program, not automated. There are no bots added to this, ladies and gentlemen. This is where real live people take control over either your account or construct it or your sales forces accounts and do the outreach for you guys at over a hundred people a day. Over a hundred people a day you are connected to. Over a hundred people a day you are following up with. Guys, how much are you getting? How much outreach are you doing while you sleep? You, you or your sales force 
are waking up to messages. And this right here is a screenshot out of, out of my, personal, uh, my personal LinkedIn. Um, on the left-hand side, you can see all these messages that I still have to respond to. That was one out of maybe 30 messages that I got reached, uh, reached out back to. Um, and then this is somebody confirming for a meeting. Um, people from all over the world, all over the country, are I'm literally reaching out to them while I sleep so that when I wake up, all I have to do is schedule them, put them in my calendar, and then focus on how we're going to do business together, right? Mm -hmm. So as long as long as you guys, <laughs> as long as you guys have the time <laughs> to just schedule something on your calendar, it's well, well worth your time. What me personally, um, what I use this for is, hey, while I'm sleeping, I have the connections. I, I, I have I have my team reaching. We, we have our team reaching out um, to people who are potential prospects. People who are who are saying, okay, look, they work in this industry. They're associated in this group. If you if you connect to only, for instance, affluent individuals, you want people that are in high net worth individual groups. You what we do is we grab them. We write down a list of them. We connect to them one by one, dishing out personalized messages asking them for interest hey if you guys seen the movie glenn gary glenn ross <laughs> where that's that crazy guy came, <laughs> the guy comes in and he goes always be closing a i d a attention interest decision and action this is what we're doing right now we are grabbing it attention we are grab we're we're hooking onto we're, we're hooking onto them for their interest and then we're asking them to make a decision how we can proceed forward in doing business together. So out of a hundred people a day that you're reaching out to. Jason, I just have to jump in. We have like two minutes left. Two minutes left. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Beautiful. Beautiful. So, um, right quick. And I want to go ahead and tell you guys a little, just a little bit about this LinkedIn Salesforce thing that we got going on for your whole Salesforce, or if you don't have a Salesforce, also we could construct one for you, basically bringing you out there. Um, bringing your Salesforce out there, connect each, having each and every one of them connect to people for them, following up with people for them so that they can get warm inbound leads. So meanwhile, they're doing cold outreach on the phones, over email, through LinkedIn. They got their leads coming in. They got their, their appointments booked. They're always closing, always closing. So how much does this reach out to? Over 100 people at minimum, 100 people a day on a normal scale given the time that it takes to do this, people usually reach out to about 20 people a day if they do something like this. If they do that many, yeah. If they do that many. Mm -hmm. But look, we reach out to minimum 100 people a day. Over one week, that's over 700 people in a week that you're reached out to. Out of 700 people a week, hey, what we've noticed is people get uh, at least 10 to 20 appointments. And out of there, at least they get maybe one to two closes on their deal one or two signs that their business is moving forward. Everybody else is put into a follow-up sequence where we go ahead, reach back out just to follow up, endorse them, um, uh, like their things, and hey, just keep you on their mind. So for everybody that's on this, I know that we don't have that. We, we didn't have much time left. And hey, if you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to Deborah. Feel free to reach out to me. Um, we're here to help you guys. We'd love to tell you more about this. So, hey, guys, let's use this. Let's let's bring things to the next level this year. Let's climb it all the way to the top because it's way too crowded at the bottom. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. That was awesome. Thank you. That was good. And, um, yeah, so definitely can attest to the 100 connections a day. We've, we ran a test on on my LinkedIn a while back and it's, it's full on. So we'll have more information on that as we, uh, we haven't, we haven't fully rolled it out yet. So I will definitely be in touch and we'll have more information on that. And um, let me see, can you put me back as host Jason? There we go. Fantastic. All right, so it's really tight. We've been on here for an hour and a half and um, 
I think what I'm gonna have to do is save that bonus to uh, to next week's because it's it's gonna take me about ten minutes to go through it with you. Um, but we will do that next time. We'll we'll um, we'll have it for you. And so have a great day, everybody. You know we've got um we've got some good stuff coming up. We've got our business accelerator boot camp coming up uh, June fifth and sixth. I'll get some information out to you guys on that. And, um, and then we'll get some information on the LinkedIn business development process. And we'll see you guys all here next Tuesday, right? We're going to do one more. I think it's a grand idea. Yeah. All right. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. We'll keep building on this. Invite your friends and uh, we'll see you guys all back here next week on Tuesday. Have a blessed weekend, everybody. Thank you, everyone.